Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to ETV Live, the leader in sim broadcasting. Tonight, we're doing the high racing thing, the bottom split here, uh, here at the Milwaukee Mile. I'll be your host, Sean, the businessman, Bickle, alongside me in the booth. going to be the Buckeye himself, A.J. Browning. Down on pit road, the wild man, Ben Burnett's going to join us. And running the cameras tonight is going to be John, the bad boy, Wessling, and Jerry Wolf. Let's hurry up and get started here and run through your official I racing B class standings here. Uh, on top is going to be Matt Witten, uh, 1,630 points. Sitting in second, 23 back is going to be Brandon Schmidt. Third is going to be Jason Karlovich. He is 29 uh, points behind your leader, Matt Witten. Fourth is going to be Byron Daly. Fifth, David Cater. Sixth, Thomas Smith, who uh, out of all the guys in the top 10, he's got 17 wins, the most of anybody in the top 10. Seventh is going to be Brad Mayhair. Eighth, David Comstock. Ninth, Kenneth Dancer. And rounding out the top ten, Michael Conti. So that's your uh, B-Class official iRacing standings right now. And uh, the season winding down. Now let's get over to the uh, ETV Live, the B-Class, the bottom split uh, standings. Sitting on top is going to be Armando Vargas. And uh, he is... Leading second place, EJ O'Rourke by 19. Third's going to be David Cater. Fourth, Jeffrey Parker. Fifth, David Comstock. Sixth, Brand Mayhair. Seventh, Dylan Duvall. Eighth, Kenneth Dancer. Ninth, Alex Ciambrone. Tenth, Thomas D. Smith. And honestly, I believe those may be the wrong standings. Because uh, I saw some different, I saw some different one earlier. Because I think Sean Brown actually, uh, yeah, and I'm getting word in my ear that uh, those were wrong. That Sean Brown was second, and uh, actually right now leading those uh, points is going to be Lionel Callisto, and I believe he has those points wrapped up, so he's going to be the champ here in the uh, B class split. So I apologize to all the viewers out there, and. Uh, Getting the wrong standings here on my live page. But uh, nonetheless, we are here at the M Milwaukee Mile. And uh, one mile track, it's flat. And uh, tell you what, AJ, let's uh, kick it to you real quick, man. It's going to be a tough track. And, man, I tell you, I've seen uh, a lot of carnage here in uh, some of the races leading up to tonight's event. Yeah, it's a tricky track. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it, you know, you look at it, it's like a giant Martinsville. It's just it's so wide. And, uh, you know, I got the little paper, it's kind of like a paper clip, uh, I think we're going to see some, some good, uh, some good race, and then I also, Bick, I want to, uh, I want to tell you, uh, thanks for, you know, filling in the booth last week, I could get out there and, uh, drive in the, uh, K Kentucky Tops, but last week had a blast, uh, really appreciate that, but, uh, back to Milwaukee, second split, last race of the season, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty eager to, to, uh, to check this one out tonight, I think it's going to be some great race in action. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you, uh, given uh, given the outlaw Jesse James the night off tonight, he's been working hard all season long doing these split races and uh, going to spend some time with the wife and uh, watch some fighting. So I, I, I guess what to each his own. I guess so, uh, Jesse, enjoy your night off. We'll miss you here in the booth, but uh, you deserved it, man. Been working hard. Uh, but I tell you, yeah, like you said, uh, AJ, it's, you know, Milwaukee, it's a tough track, man. It's, uh, you know, one groove there on the bottom. Got to keep it down there. You got to keep that car rotating, uh, the center of the corner, and you got to have that egg under the throttle and heavy braking into the corners because it's flat. Uh, so this guy's going to have to be on top of it. And, uh, you know, not only to uh, show respect to their fellow racers out there, uh, but, you know, these guys are out here, and this is an official uh, race, so, uh, you know, these guys want to protect their uh, their eye rating. Because I know, like like you, AJ, a, a lot of these guys looking to try to get into, uh, you know, the top tier for the uh, A split that we're going to broadcast next uh, season. Yeah, you definitely, you know, you, you know, when you get to a point in your eye rating, uh, you definitely... Um, once you get up there so far, you know, I mean, it's a lot easier to lose it than, than it is to gain it. So, um, that's going to be a challenge for a lot of the, a lot of the people trying to get in the pro series. You don't want to lose it because then you can't race. The split's too big. You can't get in there and race. So that's going to be a challenge, uh, for, for a lot of them next season, you know, when y'all do the Sunday nights to, to try to stay in that 
stay in that field. Uh, if you're just borderline, then it's going to be you're going to be sitting there waiting to race, and you just don't know what's going to happen if you're going to get in. If you're if you're not, um, as far as the I rating goes, but uh, man, <clears throat> t- tonight in Milwaukee, it's I've been told it's really really hard to pass. Been told from a top split driver that a lap down car can can hold you up, and and it's really hard to pass. So. <clears throat> I'm pretty interested to see what's going to happen tonight. See what's see uh you know if if that comes down to a leader trying to get around lap cars uh you know given track position to someone chasing second place third place going to be very interesting tonight. Yeah, I tell you what, real quick before we send it down trackside, uh, last time ETV we broadcasted the uh, second split here. Magnus Lasham he won at Charlotte under the lights, uh, so. Uh, Maybe he'll be in the the uh, split tonight and see if he can make it two for two here live on ETV. And uh, like I said, we're locking up the bottom split championship here, Lionel Callisto. And uh, last week we were at Kentucky AJ. You mentioned that uh, you had a good run there, uh, but w- winning that race, Dustin Montgomery, and uh, wrapping up the top split championship here for ETV, Armando Vargas. Uh, so these guys, they're going to get a uh, ETV Live, the Leader and Sim Broadcasting t-shirt uh, for winning that championship as far as uh, from what I've heard from uh, the producers <laughs> here at ETV. So uh, congratulations to those guys, a hard fault uh, championship. And, uh, you know, it's uh, something to be proud of here. But I'll tell you what, we're winding down. Hopefully we'll be getting into the server here shortly, but uh, we need to kick it down trackside our national anthem oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly
All right, welcome back, and uh, thank you for that rendition there of the uh, national anthem. I believe it's by the Cactus Cuties, the uh, best version I've ever heard. Not sure if JD updated that, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we finally got our credentials squared away. We are at the track, and the uh, warm up is about to be over. But real quick, let me send it down to Pit Road. The Wild Man Ben Burnett uh, got a little update from Pit Road for us. Well, guys. As AJ alluded to, passing is going to be a premium, and I think pit crew is going to play a big, 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 big part of this race. So watch for two tire changes. Watch for no gas changes. Guys are going to make some moves in pit road tonight, I think. All right, we'll keep our eyes down there, and uh, Ben's going to have his covered down on pit road. But uh, let's, real quick, these guys are going uh, to, going to get gridded up here and uh, we're going to try to get this thing underway got 100 laps tonight 100 miles ago with the milwaukee mile let's go on and run through your field here starting on the pole jason carlovid sitting third in the overall i racing standings on the pole tonight in that number three chevrolet outside starting second is going to be the number five of michael conti and starting row two um this row has got the uh, top two in the official b car standings Brandon Schmidt in the two, and I'm Matt Whitten in the one. Yeah, starting six going to be the number nine of Phil Juring. I believe he was in the race last week, and uh, David Cater in the number ten going to start seven. Starting eighth in the 24, Garrett Dorsey. Starting ninth in the 23, Ryan Rudy. Starting tenth in number seven of Dwayne Vincent. Rolling off 11th, number 26 of Shelvin Johnson. Starting twelfth uh, in the 14, Richard Hillenberg, and starting 13th in the 15, John Button. Wayne Grasse in the number 19 is going to start 14, starting 15th in the number 20, Cody Evanson. Starting 16th in the 4, Thomas Lewandowski, and starting 17th in the 6, Chris Overland. 18th is going to be the 11th of Brandon Bowie. 19th is going to be the number 12 of Brad Mayher. Starting 20th and 13th, Kenneth, Kenneth Dancer, and starting 21st and 16th, Matt Holden. All right, and, uh, 28 guys going to roll off here. Let's see if the pace car pulls in here because I think we may be going green this time by. We're going to try to get this thing underway, and oh, there he goes. He's going to pull in, and uh, right away, Jason Karlovich gets a good jump on the field, leads them down into turn number one, a single foul in your top two. Close quarters back in battle for third, as it looks like the number uh, two there at the uh, Reem Menard Chevy. He's going to be battling side by side for the third spot right now. Down into turn number four, AJ. Yeah, they single file out to the top five right now. Um,. Looking back, uh, Dwayne Vincent just took a spot from Chris Overland. Overland's dropping back in the four. Yeah, and close quarters for that number four of Overland as he dove it in there on the uh, number 14 there. Going to make the pass, so uh, he's picking up some spots quick. It uh, looks like he got, as Jesse would say, a phone booth uh, back around uh, the number six car and the number 15. It's going to be Chris Overland there. As, uh, those guys are side by side around 13th, 14th, and 15th. But uh, everybody seemed to be doing a good job here uh, as we complete the uh, second lap. They motor down into turn number one. Brandon Bowie just picked up a couple spots. He's just passed the 15 of um, John Button. He's moved up three or four spots there in the, in the first first couple laps here. All right, out of turn number four comes your leader, Jason Karlovich. He is uh, leading the way. Michael Conte back in second, uh, trying to uh, run him down. But these guys, it looks like they're just trying to get some laps in. The number two, Brandon Schmidt, as my scoring gets uh, sorted out here. Matt Witten, uh, overall top I rating uh, guy in the field right now, sitting in fourth. And uh, he is almost one and a half seconds back. So, uh Having a good run so far is uh, out of turn number four. We're going to put five laps on, or four laps on the board here. We're going to be working lap number five of 100 to hold it down in the board. Yeah, you know, you talked about Brandon Schmidt earlier. Um, last week, 
had a black flag. He was he was leading the point standings. Big race last week for big points, and uh, he had the black flag. He went down a lap, couldn't couldn't get his lap back. That that really hurt him. But this is a chance tonight to redeem himself, possibly win the championship. I don't I don't really know the points, how many points they're apart, but um, he's hoping to finish well ahead of that number one Matt Witten tonight. Yeah, I'm moving up uh, a spot. Looks like the number 11, Brandon Bowie. He's going to pick up the 12th spot from uh, Rich and Richard Hillenberg. Sorry there. As uh, they motor down through uh, turn number one. So Brandon Bowie on the move right now. And uh, right in front of that, uh, looks like you're going to have a battle for the 10th spot at the 6th. But Chris Overland trying to take it from Sheldon Johnson. Looks like he's going to have it. Sheldon did a good thing. Just kind of let him go and uh, knew he could get right in behind him. And uh, maybe trying to do the crossover is uh, the six of Overland almost uh, got up there and creamed the wall. But, uh, man, these guys are mixing it up back here right around the 10th spot, AJ. Yeah, that allowed Brandon Bowie to go underneath the uh, the, the 26 car there. And um looks like, uh, I believe that's a 13. He's, look, he's looking under there, too. Yeah, almost three wide, the 19th of Wayne Grassi. He was thinking about it, man. He was going to make a dive bomb move there. And the uh, 14, uh, Richard Hillenberg, he said he didn't want any any part of it and then backed out. So a uh, good job saving the car. It's still early here. And uh, moving back through the field just uh, a little bit, you got the 15 car of John Bunton trying to make a move under the 20 of Cody Evanson through one and two. And right behind that, the 25 of Sean Brown. He's sitting second in the overall points. Uh, right now in the ETV uh, B-Class bottom split points. So uh, 25 on new started way back there. But I know Sean Brown and A.J., you know Sean Brown, raced with him before and some other sims. But uh, he's one, he's very patient and uh, methodical. So uh, look for him to be moving up as he peeks to the inside of the 20s across the stripe. Yeah, Case Brinksman in the number 28 started shocking on the field, like you said, and uh, already up six spots into, tw into uh, 22nd right now. So uh, having a good run. Back up front, Jason Karlovich still leading the way in that number five. Michael Conte still on his back bumper. It looks like these guys, A.J., getting into uh, some lap traffic here already after 10 laps. Yes, the Michael Emmons are coming up, uh, coming up on him pretty quick. He's he's probably probably wanting a caution right now. Might have missed the setup a little bit. Uh, looks like the three is going to close in on him in probably just less than a lap here. Yeah, I tell you one thing, uh, you know these guys need to do take care of that right rear tire, AJ, because uh, you push it too too much too early, and you're really going to heat that thing up, and it's really going to cause it to be a handful. You know, out of the corners here, this being such a flat track. It uh, looks like the lap car is going to give him some room, but I don't know. Jason's going to go to the outside. That might open the door here. What's the five going to do? These guys are uh, going to be in a foam boot, as uh, Jesse James would say. Nonetheless, uh, Jason makes the pass, and here comes Michael Conte, and he's going to get around that lap car. So uh, good job for uh, Michael Emmons getting out of the way there and uh, letting these guys uh, continue to race here. Absolutely, yeah. Just like I was talking about in the pre-race, you know, just just a little bit of a held up, getting held up from a lap car can uh, can close close your spot up behind you pretty quick here. So that's going to be a very interesting, uh, very interesting thing here as this race goes on. Um, you know, who's who's going to give who's going to give room to the lead lap cars, and who's going to you know who's going to fight for that to stay on the lead lap. So it's going to make it pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely, and I believe, I want to say Michael Conte in that number five car uh, last week uh, when we were at Kentucky, he, he showed his stuff early, and, uh, you know, he was one of the guys to beat, uh, you know, until uh, Dustin Montgomery was able to uh, run him down and get past, and, uh, you know, Michael ran right behind him, right in his tire tracks, but just didn't have enough there at the end to, uh, to get up to him and make a pass, so I know uh, Michael wanting to redeem himself here get a victory here live on etv and uh sh showing some stuff early as he's right in the tire tracks of uh, one of your top dogs uh jason carlovich
Moving back through the field, looks like uh, everybody's kind of single foul. Is oh, close contact between uh, Richard Hillenberg and the 14. Uh, made a move on Wayne Grossi, picked up the 14 spot, but man, they traded a little paint in that uh, that deal there. So uh, not sure how Wayne's going to tank to that, but uh, nonetheless, as he tried to dive bomb the 14. And, uh, man, he is really blowing the entry to those corners. That's definitely going to slow him down there. But, uh, nonetheless, the 14 of uh, Richard Hillenberg picking up the spot, AJ. It's going to allow the, uh, the the 21. He's going he's gonna to put a nose underneath the 19, Wayne Gross. And uh, he's going to try to race him through 1 and 2 here. And, and the 21 will complete that pass. Yeah, Steve Roser, another one, uh, you know, I'm familiar with and have raced with before and a uh, very good racer, very patient racer and a uh, clean racer. Got himself a win here on ETV here in the uh, the B-Class uh, split races uh, at Phoenix, I believe, uh, months ago. Uh, so he knows how to get it done here. And uh, right now, Steve Rosner sitting in 15th, so uh, having a good run so far. But uh, any word down there, Ben, let's kick it down to you on that number 19 car, because I tell you, boy, that car looks like a handful and uh, not very fun to drive right now. Yeah, I think the track's starting to get a little greasy on the guys. And looking back through the field in the 20th, 21st, and 22nd place, we got a three-car battle that the guys, they, they look like they can go forward. But when they get ready to make the pass, the car hits the wall. I just, I don't know if guys are going to be able to do anything much on the track unless somebody in front of them slips up. Yeah, I tell you, probably a lot of radio uh, communication going on. What kind of adjustments to make to these cars when they do hit pit road and uh, try to get these things fixed up. Uh, maybe some tire pressure adjustments and uh, try to take care of that right rear there. But, uh, yeah, back there, it looks like uh, Sean Brown in the 19. He's being uh, followed closely by the 22 of Wendell James right now. And uh, that might become a battle as Wendell pulls right up to the back bumper of the tw that 25 Chevrolet out of turn number two down the back stretch. Not going to happen this time. And I tell you, A.J., you know, Sean Brown, he's one of those guys, and, uh, you know, that card doesn't want to turn into the corner he's one of those guys that he'll back those corners up big time and uh, it'll take a few guys by surprise absolutely man regardless what the track is um sean brown's always going to be he's always going to figure a way out get his car on the long run uh, as long as the run goes on sean brown just seems to get stronger and stronger and uh yeah he's up the 19th place right now he's he's moving up up uh i think this race Been out at number two down the back stretch. Uh, still up front, Jason Karlovich. He's shown the way, led all 21 laps so far. Michael Conte trying, giving chase, and uh, hasn't dropped off too much. But I tell you what, that number five car, man, he is really pitching that thing into the corners, uh, Ben Burnett. Is there any communication going on there? That car, I mean, it, it really looks like he is hustling that car around these corners. Yeah, I believe everybody, especially in the top five, the way they're as hard as they're having to drive these cars it's getting slick out there and when they go to make their green flag it looks like green flag pit stops the way everybody's giving and taking where they can i believe pit crews are going to play a big big part of this who's going to change their tires the fastest and make the adjustments the fastest but we'll just have to wait looks like the guys are driving clean races and a lot of battles all over the track yeah, and a battle shaping up right now is going to be for the fourth position. And that number one car, Matt Witten, he has the fourth spot. And the right behind him in fifth, the number eight are Richard Doucette. And uh, Richard Doucette flying those uh, play seat logos on there. And, uh, you know, want to remind everybody, a little iRacing news here. Remember, you put iRacing as your primary sponsor on your car. You run ten official races here in season four which is November 1st through January 23rd, so that is winding down. You're automatically entered to win a play seat, and uh, I know I use a play seat, and it's definitely an advantage to uh, sit comfortably and race hard. So, uh, you know, right now at number eight, Richard Doucette uh, looking, hopefully maybe he can 
get himself a play seat. But uh, having a good run right now, A.J. sitting fifth. And uh, right now, Matt Whitten holding him off for the time being as they're going to cross the strike and work on lap 25. Yeah, Richard just said, hanging up there, doing doing pretty good. I'm looking back. Um, man, it's so single file. It's really hard to find some action here. But uh, Phil Jering, he's been moving up. Uh, Chris Overland just got passed by uh, Phil Jering. He's... He's right now. He's been moved back to ninth, and uh, Dwayne Vincent and Brandon Bowie right now, and looking to close in on him. Yeah, Phil yeah. Turing in that number nine car. Sorry, Ben. He was uh, he was in the ten car last week. He's in the number nine car, so uh, moving on up uh, in the uh, high rating, I guess you could say. But uh, just went around, I think, one of the lap cars there, but having a good run sitting back in eighth spot. And uh, got something down on pit road there, Ben? Yeah, Sean. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, Thomas Lewandowski started 16th, and he, he looks like he might have one of the top cars to beat tonight. Uh, just if he makes the right adjustment, get that extra little bit, I think he's going to be the car to beat. Yeah, right now sitting in seventh and uh, having a pretty good run. And I noticed kind of the line he's taking around this uh, this track here is uh, kind of to diamond the corners. And, uh, you know, some of the guys will do that around this uh, this track, these big, long, sweeping, flat corners here. It looks like we're going to be under caution here. See some smoke maybe on the front stretch here. Uh, we'll have to get the e-play machine wound up, see if we can uh, figure out exactly uh, who was involved and what brought out that this uh, first caution here on lap number 27. Uh, we'll send it down to the bad boy or uh, the corn dog Jerry Wolf, see if they can get that queued up here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, guys, uh, Bickle looks like he just come into the corner here. It looks like he might. I got down on that apron, got a little bit loose out of the corner, and just flat out lost it on his own. No contact, nobody around. He was very lucky to keep that car under control and not get any damage on it. So they'll get it in, get four fresh ones on it. They'll come down there and see old, my old buddy Ben down there. All right, well, that's a caution that uh, a lot of these guys were looking for here to, uh, one, get caught back up, two, get in there, make the adjustments that they uh, they need to make. And it uh, looks like, Ben, you got some company on pit road. Bro. Yeah, Lewandowski just missed his pit box, slid through it just a little bit. That's going to hurt him. So, got to see if his pit crew can pick him up on this. Yeah, it looks like the three car, your leader, Jason Karlovich, down and away first. Michael Conte is going to come off second. Witten's going to come off third and eighth. Richard Doucette. So, uh, man, I tell you, slow stop on that number two of Brandon Schmidt. He came in third, and uh, looks like he is going to come off of pit road sixth so uh losing three spots there so that menards team a little slow on the stop down there uh, ben yeah i think there's a couple of guys their pit crews just wasn't quite ready for them drivers come in hot uh a lot of nerves because they know they can't do it on the track as easily as they can get them in the pit road and pit road's gonna play a big role as it already has to thus far all right, well, pit stops complete. First caution of the night, 30 laps down here at the Milwaukee Mile. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Stick and stay. Don't go away.
All right, we're back. These guys getting lined up. We're getting ready to go back to green here at the Milwaukee Mile. Your wave around car is going to be the 20 Cody Evanson, Case Brinksman, Brad Mayhair, Michael Emmons. Looks like they got the wave around as the field cycles through turn three and four, being led by the pace car. Jason Karlovich, he's led every lap tonight on and off pit road first. Michael Conte going to line up on the outside just like they started the race. Pace cars in, flag man waving the flag, and here we go. Karlovich gets a great jump on Michael Conte. Conte going to try to get it back in there in second, and he does. So one, two, three, all single foul, but man, back behind that, you have a real soup as these guys are two by two, cycling out of turns one and two down the back stretch into three, AJ. Yeah, and Brandon Schmidt's right in the middle of that. Lost a couple spots on pit road, trying to trying to gain as much as he can get back. He's he's wanting to get get to that one car as quickly as he can. He looks underneath the aid of Richard Doucet right now, um, come up straight going into turn one. Yeah, down in turn number one, these guys starting to get single foul. The ten of David Cater has moved into the fourth spot, so uh, this David having a great run so far. And uh, back behind that, looks like these guys getting single foul, but looks like the number seven, Dwayne Vincent, he's going to try to make a move. Is actually right in front of that, Brandon Bowie. We saw him making some moves earlier as he gets real close to the number nine of Phil Juring. They're going to be side by side out of four. Got to be careful, egg under the throttle there. They're going to drag race down the front stretch. Looks like Phil Juring's going to prevail down into turn number one, but here comes the 11 again, and right in front of that, it looks like you got the eight of Richard Doucette getting passed by the six of Chris Overland. Overland's going to take that spot, so move Move Overland up a spot into the seven. Looks like the 11, Brandon Bowie, going to make that pass on Phil Juring. So uh, these guys shucking and driving, trying to get the track position here on the restart, and this is the time to do it, AJ. Yeah, and uh, Ben mentioned earlier, Thomas Lewandowski uh, restarted seventh there. He's picked up two spots. Right now he's riding fifth. A little better track position this time, so uh, we'll, we'll see if that car see if that car will come oh, forward. Oh, trouble out of turn number two. Sorry, the 14 gets a tap. Goes around. Rosner's involved. The 19 of Wayne Grossi's involved. And, oh, uh, Rosner took a big hit back there. But, man, that all started there. Looks like the 14 got a tap. Uh, I'm not sure who was behind him, but spun him right around and uh, collected a few cars coming out of turn number two. And, man, restarts. Breed cautions, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, man, that's what happened. But let's send it down to Jerry Wolf. You got that for us. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what there, Mr. Businessman. It looks like maybe the 26 might have been involved in that, and that's who gave him the tap around. But I'll tell you what, you are correct. Steve Rosner took a big hit. Going to be a tough night for those guys to get the stuff straightened up. But we'll get this back green, see what we can do here. But, yeah, unfortunate night for them, Sean. All right, yeah, tough break there. Uh, those guys are trying to be patient, and unfortunately the cautions a bunch them up, and, uh, you know, close quarters there. That's what happens, trading a little paint. But uh, Ben Burnett looks like a few guys thinking about coming down pit road, and the leader stays out, and Conte comes in. Witten decides to stay out. So uh, Michael Conte gives up second spot. He's going to hit pit road. Not sure if that was the call he wanted to make there, but uh, nonetheless he's down to you, buddy. Yeah, we got a few in the top 10, 15 decided to come down and then more on back. Your Most of your top 15 stayed out, only a few laps on the tires, so they're really nowhere. Uh, Conti, he might be thinking fuel strategy. You never know. Uh, might try to stretch this. And this might be a little much, but... Who knows? He might know something I don't. Two tires later, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you, by the way, he exited pit road. It uh, doesn't look like he's too happy with the crew chief and that call there. Uh, you know, those guys were uh, kind of playing that game. And uh, he came in. Everybody else behind him seemed to stay out. So he's given up a lot of track position. Went on and took four tires. But, man, he's going to be back in that soup. And, uh, you know, A.J., we just saw what happened. And uh, Michael Conte's got a fast car. Hopefully he can keep it clean. Uh, it's still early. He can get back up there. But, uh, man, I don't know. He's going to have some driving to do. But... Yeah, um, it just surprised me. Uh, you know, he was, um, I believe he was second. And surprised me he went to pit road. But, uh, Ben, do you know the the, uh, the fuel window? I know you ran some races. Do you, do you know how many laps they can do? Because that might have been a fuel strategy move and not not worrying about the track position, thinking that, you know, they may stay green here. Well, 
about 60 to 65 depending on what kind of gear you're running i know there's two different gears that you can choose from so that's going that's going to play a big part of your fuel strategy uh taller gear less miles so who knows what his crew chief's got under it i guess we'll find out i'm gonna keep an eye on him see see if he's making headway uh just hope everything works out for him i, I i'm kind of worried about that decision yeah absolutely this thing goes green he may be sitting pretty if he can get 60 to 65 laps but nonetheless pace cars in green flag is out field down into turn number one jason karlovich back out front and uh getting one of those hella good restarts there but matt witten giving chase right now followed by thomas lewandowski david cater richard Doucette rounding out the top five and the number two of brandon schmidt he's on the inside right now of the number eight car going to pick up a spot wow Witten, he's going to lose a couple spots there as it looks like lewandowski and david cater right now are going to get by so uh matt Witten lost two spots there as they head down into one so uh man not sure what's going on on that m&m's uh chevrolet but nonetheless giving up a couple spots there aj yeah lost two spots he's settled in right now in front of schmidt and uh and we got action we got action everywhere all the way through the back there man it's just now they're starting to get single filed out uh, there goes witten underneath cater witten's going to try to take back the uh, the third spot from cater he will complete that pass, and Schmidt will too. So move, uh, move Cater, Cater back to, back to fifth, and uh, Schmidt and Witten the third and fourth. Yeah, it looks like Sean Brown in the 25 just gave up a spot to the number six of Chris Overland. So Overland up into 11. Sean Brown gave up another spot to the 13th of Kent, 13 of Kenneth Dancer. And uh, Sean able to stop the bleeding, but right in front of that, we're going to have three wide down the front stretch. Here comes Conte on the inside of the seven of Dwayne Vincent and Phil During on the outside. They get it sorted out before they get down there, but Conte's going to try to make it a two for one. I told you he's got a fast car, and he ain't wasting no time trying to get up front. He puts the slide job on Phil out of turn number two. So uh, move Conte up into the 10th spot. So already, man, I don't know, maybe that was a good stop. He's got just a couple more laps of fuel, uh, you know, on that AC Delco Chevrolet. And the uh, caution out on the speedway right now. Not sure exactly what happened. I'm sure somebody has found some trouble somewhere. But uh, we'll get the ETV e-play machine wound up once again here and. uh See if we can give all you fine viewers out there a look at what exactly happened here. I believe, Sean, it was the 22 Wendell James. I'm not sure. Jerry, you got that? Yeah, and you're going to be right, uh, AJ. The 22 Wendell James looks like uh, may have had a little bit of help uh, down into turn number three. He was battling hard with the 20 of Cody Evanson and put a block on him it looks like cody just kind of dove it in there and uh but man yeah just kind of took him out Ooh, hard contact on his roof jerry Wolf. yeah you're exactly right there sean bickley he did take a rough ride there uh you know it's up for tonight there's a lot of a lot of tour up race cars out here tonight and i hope we can kind of get this straightened out but very tough night for wendell james he's got a little damage all the way around i believe all right, well, yeah, tough break. We'll try to get that thing patched up. But, uh, Ben, let's send it down to you. Got some guys on pit road. Yeah, uh, 10th place, our highest running late lead lap car, Richard Doucette, he pitted. Uh, we got Lee Wendowski pitting again. And I think he might have took two tires. I'll have to check on that. Yeah, it looks like the 15 of Bunton was on pit road and the number 12 of brad may here uh cycling off the of pit road as well so uh tell you what that number 15 of john bunton that napa chevrolet that's a beautifully painted car there i mean i like the way that thing looks so uh man great paint job whoever painted that car up for him but uh tell you what cautions out here six or five excuse me five laps from halfway here at the milwaukee mile let's take another quick commercial break Get things sorted out, and we'll come back and uh, shoot these guys off down into turn number one one more time. Stick and stay. Don't go away here on the TV Live.
Alright, we're back here. These guys are lined up. And when these guys cross the stripe, it's going to be three laps from halfway here at the Milwaukee Mile. Close quarters, tight racing, and uh, some bad accidents. And uh, right now, some cruising, some fisticuffs down on pit road. And uh, we got the wild man running down there trying to get a get a uh, hold of what's going on. But the green flag back out. Jason Carlin, that man, he's been on it all night long in these restarts. He's going to lead them down into turn number one, followed by Matt Witt. Brandon Schmidt in a battle for third spot there, or excuse me, fourth spot, David Cater and Brandon Bowie. Remember Bowie, he's been on the move all night long, A.J. Browning, and here comes Michael Conte on the inside of that number 10 of David Cater through three and four, so man, Michael Conte's got a fast car, and he is not wasting any time trying to get back to the front. Yeah, Michael Conte lost the track position earlier. Um... I didn't like that caution when it came out. He was thinking probably fuel strategy, but uh, man, he is he is driving that thing loose. I'm seeing a lot of loose race cars, but he is he is a ten on loose, man. And uh, just how he's how he's gaining the track position, just really good driving oh. from the five of Monica Pane. Caution out on the speedway again, guys. As we got the somebody else has found some trouble out here, possibly the number twenty seven. Not exactly. Yeah, it looks like the 27 just kind of lost it going into turn number one. That's going to be the uh, Al Forster. Yeah, just looped it around, couldn't hang on to it there, and uh, caught a little bit of the outside safer barrier here at the Milwaukee Mile. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to slow them down one more time here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Bickle, it's kind of odd there. It looks like he might have actually got on the brakes a little bit because the car jerked to the left once and then to the right and into that hard into that outside wall. So I think he might have had a little bit of braking issue going on there. I don't think that was a snap loose. Yeah, that's what it kind of looked like. It looked like he hit the brake, and then all of a sudden it just kind of seemed to head right up there for the wall, and he tried to save it. But uh, tell you what, these guys faking pit road again. Jason Karlovich not coming down pit road. Looks like the first car down pit road is going to be the 20. I think that's the 26, I believe. I can see him here on my scoring, but uh, nonetheless, Ben, you got, oh, it's Sheldon Johnson uh, coming in in the 14th spot, Ben. And he slides through his pit box. Uh, probably going to take four tires here. The 24 is also in. We got 16, 17, 18. Uh, the 21 and the 22 are having extensive repairs made. Uh, they were involved in that last caution, which there was a little bit of controversy on who was really at fault of that wreck. Uh, one driver saying the other one, and of course the other one says, it's your fault. Yeah, well, that'll happen here. You get these, uh, these kind of races, short track racing, but, uh, nonetheless, they'll get it all, uh, figured out here and get back out there but i tell you what sean brown and the number 25 remember he's sitting second right now to lionel Callisto in the standings lionel has locked up the uh the championship here but uh, nonetheless sean brown trying to uh hold on to the second spot over scott johnson and to be quite honest i don't see scott johnson in here in this split i believe we only had one split from uh what i'm hearing but uh, so it looks like Sean's going to be able to wrap up second uh, spot in the points. But I tell you, AJ, he started, I believe, 12th or 13th that last restart, and right away in one lap he gave up five spots. So uh, that that car not handling to Sean Brown's liking and uh, decided to come in pit road. And uh, he was the first car off the pit road, and I believe he may have been speeding because he's gone all the way to the back. I was just sitting here wondering the thing, same thing, Bickle, because um, I didn't see him make his pit, pit road entrance, but yeah, it's the speed of the pit road. Once to go to the back, probably uh, settle down a little bit. Um, probably hoping this thing goes green at the end. Um, he looked pretty good in the long run earlier and try to try to uh, drive his way up through there again. Guys, I think the drivers that are playing a fuel strategy they have hit their window and we might see a few drivers that are done for the day on pit road uh 
in the side of their window, the pit crews might not have been performing like they wanted them to. Take it out of the pit crew's hand. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you, Jason Karlovich, he's been out there, and uh, I think he's led every lap so far here tonight. Michael Conte, remember, he gave up second and uh, has wasted no time getting back to the front. He's going to restart fifth this time. And uh, got a couple extra laps of fuel and a couple extra laps of fresher tires on there. We'll see uh, if that pays off for him here. We pace cars in, green flag back out, and Jason nails the gas and takes off once again. And that leads him down into turn number one. Matt Whitten, he's going to fall into second. Looks like Brandon Schmidt's going to fall into third. Looks like you got the 11 of Brandon Bowie. He's been on the move all night tonight, guys, and uh, having a good run. As he tried to throw the block on Michael Conte down into turn number three and uh, makes it pay off, but it uh, looks like Conte may be giving him a little bit of the business through turn three and four as Bowie gets loose. Here comes Conte going to try to make a move as they cross the stripe down into one move. Michael Conte up a spot. He's going to pick up that fourth spot, so move Brandon Bowie back to fifth right now and uh, got a battle behind that. It looks like the six of Chris Oakland. Haven't called his, not, his name a whole lot tonight, but I tell you, he's sitting right there in that position and uh, having a good run. It looks like Phil Juring and Dwayne, Vin or excuse me, Phil Juring and uh, David Cater are going to argue over the seventh spot now for three and four. They do. Yeah, Phil does complete that pass, and he's going to bring Thomas Lewandowski with him. No, oh, Cater drives it back in, holds off Lewandowski, pulls right oh. behind Phil. Oh, it's business time through one and two as David Cater gave Phil Juring a little bit of the bumper saying, hey, man, come on, let's go. Let's, we got to get away here. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, the four, Thomas Lewandowski, uh, sitting right there, and he's been on and off pit road, too, so he may have a uh, little bit of an advantage with some fresher tires on that the Chevrolet as well. And uh, sitting behind that, you got the seven car. It's, oh, caution out on the speedway again. These guys are going to woe up one more time here at the Milwaukee Mile. And man, I tell you, that 14 car, he doesn't look very good as he's trying to get it down on the pit lane right now. So uh, trouble for Richard Hillenberg as uh, he was battling with Cody Evanson. Cody Evanson, they've already run into it with somebody. And, whoa, big wreck there for those guys. So... Man, did Jerry show these fine viewers what happened there? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. It looks like they kind of just got into each other back and forth, and then the 14 shot back up the track into the 20. And um, I would say both of them are pretty much uh, tore up, Sean Biggle. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that 14 is pretty banged up, Ben. Guys, the leader, Jason Carlovich, is on pit road along with Michael Conti. I believe this is the last stop for these guys tonight. Oh, it's like two tires for the five of Michael Conte. He's going to uh, win the race off of pit road there. Jason Karlovich is going to come off second. The two of Brandon Schmidt going to roll off of pit road third. So, uh, man, a little bit of strategy there. Two tires, it looked like, for the five of Michael Conte. So, uh, man, he's trying to uh, get in front of that three car any way possible. It's like the crew got it done for him there. Absolutely. Uh, pretty loose earlier. You know, he I was mentioning how loose he looked earlier, but uh, maybe he knows something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, probably took some wedge out the counter and, and uh, see what he does from here on out. Guys, the crew chief for Michael Conte was a last second decision. The guys were standing on the wall with four tires, and at the last second, he said two, dropped the jack, and he was gone. All right, we'll have to see if that's the uh, the call of the race there. You know, like I said last week, Michael Conte at Kentucky Speedway uh, showed us stuff, led a bunch of the laps until Dustin Montgomery was able to get by. Uh, this time came in, gave up the track position, and now comes in, takes two tires, and gets in front of that three car. And you know, AJ, I believe it was you who was talking earlier how hard it is to pass here at the Milwaukee Mile. That may have been a strategy to get in front of that three car because we saw him run with them earlier. If he could just stay in front, run his line, and make it absolutely impossible for that three car to pass, you know, he's got a fast car. He may end up in victory lane. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for, for Jason, 
12th spots not where you, not where you want to be really at this point in the race i mean you know he's got his four tires um he's got time to get up there but uh this place is just so hard to pass he's gonna have his work cut out for him um, a lot of them guys up there is probably pretty happy uh you know they get they get that clean air um they get that little breakaway that that you know has been happening up front so We'll just have to, have to see how this plays out. Um, I do think, though, the three and the five back there, I still think, you know, probably the, could be, you know, so far the best cars in the race, but uh, that all might that all might have changed after, after that uh, cycle of pit stops. Yeah, absolutely. want to remind everybody, guys, you know, the new Daytona iRacing is getting ready to put it out at the end of January, beginning of February. Go buy Daytona now, even though it's the old one, because if you buy the old one now, you're going to get the new one for free. Uh, if not, you're going to have to buy both of them. Uh, so go do that now. Buy Daytona if you haven't already done that. As the field cycles out of turn number four, pace car looks to hit pit road. Matt Witten's going to lead them down and gets a good jump right now. David Cater in second in that number 10 car. Thomas Lewandowski, he's going to roll off third here on this restart. Makes a power move down into turn number one to get around David Cater. So as they cycle out of turn number two, and caution two, the two is involved, Overland's involved. These guys piling up down into turn number two there. And, man, what a tough break for that number two car. He was having a good run, and the number six of Overland, uh, guys. I don't know if Overland took a whole lot of damage on that. Doesn't look like his car's too beat up. But, man, he, he had some good track position and had a good run going. But, nonetheless, that's going to put him well back with 40 laps to go. I'm going to tell you what, Mr. Bickle, it looks like there was just a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of widen up in front of him, and they, I really don't think they had anywhere to go on that. Heavy damage to that two car. Looks like the Menards car got a little bit, maybe another guy there. So tough break again, and hopefully we can get these things straightened out, get going here, and get a good, good green flag run out of this. Guys, just a footnote. Sean Brown, earlier pit road speeding penalty, uh, stayed out on that last caution, is up to 10th now. Restarted night, lost a spot on the restart, but track position playing a key factor. Yeah, absolutely. Sean Brown up to 10th right now after that. And, uh, man, I, I got to tell you, you know, Chris Overland did a great job in that number six car and uh, got a little squirrely. It looks like he's going to hit pit road this time, but I don't think the crew's going to have a whole lot of damage to patch up. Uh but did a good job of kind of locking that car down so he didn't uh, power drive that number two car. But uh, nonetheless, the two and the six on pit road. And... Guys, Phil, during pitting at this time, got a few takers. I think we got a few cars that are still getting more damage repaired. Uh... The two car definitely getting damage repaired right now. Guys, I don't that that two car suffered some rear damage. Um, I didn't see him really hit the front of his car. He might be okay. Uh, Phil took a good shot in the side of his side of his car. Um, do you think damage really plays a, a, a key role here? Or, I mean, you know, these guys get a couple more cautions. Um, you know, they could probably just stay out there and keep their track position. Well, I, I, I think it, I think it would pay, play a little bit of, uh, it, it would definitely hurt you just a little bit because you need a, that downforce being such a flat track. But, uh, we'll send it down to pit road then. Guys, just a little bit on the two car. He's got a left front splitter, left front nose. His fender's pretty straight. It's just kicked off the nose a little bit. Got some gappage between the hood, the body lines. Uh, might not affect him too bad. Never know. Yeah, I have heard of cars getting warped up and it make them drive better. Uh, just have to wait and see. You know, Ben, I've heard the same thing. I've, I've heard real race car drivers talk about they go out and smack the wall on purpose because it'll... <laughs> Help the car get it a little more downforce, I guess. You know, they they can't get the car through tech with the downforce they want, so they'll just put it through tech and then go out and smack the wall one time and uh, maybe help that car out a little bit. 
But though, yeah, we'll have to see for sure. But I tell you what, right now these guys getting lined up. Let's run through the top ten as they're going to restart this time. And uh, when they come across the line, these six, lap 65 will be working. But uh, Matt Whitten, uh kind of been quiet running in the top five all night. But uh, he is your top I-rating guy in there. That's why he's got the number one on there. He's going to restart number one on this restart. Thomas Lewandowski on and off pit road tonight. Great run. He's going to restart second. The 10 car, David Cater, is going to start restart third. The 8, Richard Doucette, going to restart fourth. Brand Mayher going to restart fifth. Ryan Rudy, haven't called his name all night. He is uh, going to restart sixth. Matt Holden going to restart seventh. Michael Conte, he's going to restart eighth. Shelvin Johnson, ninth. And uh, gosh, Sean Brown, second in the points. He's going to restart tenth. Pace car is in. Stickman's going to wave the green flag. And Matt Witt takes off down into turn number one. He's going to have to leave as they get down. There's going to be a drag race for the second spot right now. Looks like Dave Decatur is going to have it. Uh, Lewandowski is going to have to give it up. But, man, what a hornet's nest behind that. These guys are going to have to get it figured out. Three wide down the back stretch. you got the 23, 26, 7, and 11. All in a hornet's nest contact down into turn number three. It's Bowie in the seven car of uh, Dwayne Benson uh, trading a little paint there through three and four. They get it figured out, though. Great job. Uh, they cycle off a of turn number four and uh, going to put 65 laps on the board, AJ. Yeah, Matt Holden, he got loose there. Um, he got loose there, went down the track, gained his gained his uh, momentum back up and uh, he's, he's back to 8th right now Dwayne Vincent got loose behind him and they're side by side the 11 and the uh, the 23 is looking underneath oh Ooh, it's not going to work turn number 4 it's going to be the 23 oh and the 15 head on into the inside wall the 19 is up on two wheels is there a car underneath him Looks like the 13's involved as well, but man, that 15 car of John Button, he took a head-on shot. It's Phil Juring, he's involved as well, and the 15 looks like they're going to put that thing on the hauler and head to the barn, as J.D. says. Man, he took a shot, uh, Jerry Wolf. Man, I'm going to tell you what, it looks like that 23 just came right up into the back end of there and flipped him around, Sean Bickle, but you are right. The guy behind him there, he took a heavy hit to the wall. Uh, he's probably shaking his head right now, wondering where he's really at. Yeah, he came up there. It looks like uh, Sean Brown may have been involved, uh, guys, in that uh, that wreck as well. He may have been in the vicinity of that. And yeah, he was. Uh, I just rewound my replay just a little bit to uh, get another look at it. And uh, nowhere to go. And it looks like the two got into him. And uh, he pancaked the driver's side door. Not a whole lot of damage, but nonetheless, uh, second in points. And... Uh, Taking a little bit of damage here at the Milwaukee Mile, but uh, man, another wreck here is uh, Ben. You got company on pit road, yeah, guys. A few cars involved in that wreck, and I think some back markers deciding fresh tires might be a way to go. Uh, cars slide through their pits, a lot of chaos down here. Guys trying to make last minute decisions. Yeah, it's getting to be go time. You can see the uh, the aggression level has uh, been turned up just a notch. As uh, these guys, as hard as it is to pass, uh, trying every way they can to stick their nose in there and uh, you know trying to make it happen, Jerry Wolf. Now I'm gonna tell you what, Sean Beckel, me and me and uh, Johnny Boy went back and took a look at that Sean Brown thing. He might want to go on ahead and just call up uh, his crew chief and start thinking his lucky stars because John, I believe that could have been a whole lot worse for him than it really was. Yeah, he actually came out of there sound like a rose, Jerry. Uh, uh, great job by Sean Brown maneuvering through there. Uh, and he don't usually get that lucky, Sean Bickle. No, I tell you what, uh, yeah, Sean uh, usually got that black cloud over his head, but uh, nonetheless was able to uh, get out of there without a with minimal damage. And uh, I know he was on pit road there getting that thing patched up, but... Uh, Tell you what, these guys are going to cross the stripe. It's going to be 30 laps to go here at the Milwaukee Mile, and uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think we're getting the green flag this time, so I want to go on and uh, uh, throw this out there as well. Uh, you know, I mentioned the play seats thing, put their sponsor on and uh, get entered in to win a play seat, but uh, Thrustmaster, they make a, uh, a wheel 
So uh, you're in the market for a wheel. Maybe you want to win a free wheel. They're doing the same thing. You could win a T500 RS. Uh, throw Thrustmaster on your car as a primary sponsor. Same deal. Ten races in season four, and I know the season's kind of winding down, but uh, you know, throw it on there, and uh, maybe you'll be the lucky one to, to win a Thrustmaster wheel. And uh, you know, it looks like a pretty cool wheel. I don't know. I, I use a different one, but uh, you never know. Might be the uh, the advantage that you need help you get around the Milwaukee Mile, AZ Brown. Yeah, Sean, you can't you can't beat that uh, game that you love to race, I racing, and uh, you know they offer you to give you a wheel, you know just just to run all season, and uh, you can have fun and 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 win a wheel. You you can't beat some of the stuff that they give away. Yeah, absolutely, that's one of the great things about I racing, man. They uh, they know how to market it and uh, put it out there and. Uh, you know, keeps everybody involved, and, uh, you know, that's why you got all these guys out here racing and uh, staying with it. But pace cars in, and the stick man, he's going to wave that green rag, and here we go. Matt Witten puts the hammer down, that M&M Chevrolet down into turn number one. Three wide behind. Oh, they're wrecking again, man, 16. The three car. Oh, and the seven gets loose, and he goes around. Big mess down into turn number one. The aggression is definitely turned out. Looks like uh, the two car. He is involved again. Tough break for Brandon Schmidt, but uh, man, that seven car of Dwayne Benson took some heavy damage, Jerry Wolf. Yeah, you are exactly correct. We'll pull this up here, the viewers. Looks like the 11 got the back of the 16, spun him around, guys, and uh, looks like it all just kind of broke loose from there. Tough night here. Like I said, hope we can get us at least one good green flag run here tonight, Sean Bickle. Yeah, I tell you, these guys trying to uh, get all the track position they can. But, uh, you know, I tell you what, uh, Jerry, John, everybody, uh, one way to get on ETV, turn that car around and put it nose first into the wall. That'll get you on ETV. Probably not the way you want, but uh, nonetheless, they, you'll get on ETV. They call that an ETV jinx, don't they? Something like that? I, I think I, you created that. I, I think it's only if we if we call the guy or interview him somehow, but, uh, you know, these guys aren't in here with us and, uh, no, no way to interview these guys. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Hey, you know, who's not here tonight though, Sean Bigel? Who's that? JD. I wonder if he might be in one of these cars under an assumed name. Now, uh, JD, he's back working the buffet or I actually, I saw him putting some strings on the guitar players, uh, guitar the etv lap band they've been back there practicing and uh tuning up and uh, i know he's been back there working with them so <laughs> he's restringing guitars right now but uh, i tell you what uh why don't we take a commercial break when we come back we'll probably have uh 25 laps to go to decide this one here at milwaukee mile so uh stick and stay don't go away Cowboy, ain't no need to get the hammers out and tear it all up. What you need to do is get a hold of David Bass, DB Tech Services. Technology support offered at a price affordable to most churches, not-for-profits, and individual customers. I'll tell you what, David Bass, IT specialist, over five years at the corporate level. Hey, man, computer maintenance, hardware and software upgrades. I'll tell you what, David Bass, DB Tech Services, established specifically to provide lower-cost options to churches and non-profit organizations. So put the hammer away, dude. Get a hold of David Bass. DB Tech Services. DBTechService.com. All right, we're back here at the Milwaukee Mile. They crossed the line here. We're going to be working lap 75 under caution. 25 laps to go to decide this one. And uh, Matt Witten leading the way. And uh, John the Bad Boy Wrestling, lead producer here at ETV. What do you got, buddy? I'm just watching in the chat room here, and James South said he's a better broadcaster than you, Sean Bickle. So uh, I got him up here in the booth. I heard the back door sound, and maybe the race fans can test for themselves. Uh, James South, uh, uh, let's hear a little bit of broadcasting from you. Yeah, man, he may hit the table. I thought that was ready. What do you think, Sean Brown? 
hunting shop back on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I, don't I think know. you might well, have I... a beat by a little bit. A little, little bit, I don't know. I, I couldn't understand all that uh, gibberish there coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I think he he's going to have to learn to speak a little bit better. <laughs> if he wants to bring them back to green, then fine. He can go ahead. I think I'm holding on to my broadcast seat. But just keep him away from the buffet. It? Well, he just ran out the back door really fast, Sean. <laughs> oh, well. All right, Ben, uh, you wild man down there on pit road or what you got for me bro? uh just a little thing on uh brandon schmidt the two car any advantage he might have got with that little bit of ding up on the left front he's definitely lost because he's got damage on the right front and more left front damage all right so ready into his crew uh car not handling to his liking here but uh i'll tell you what though uh wild man he you know, he's sitting in 12th right now, and the way things are going, if he just kind of, you know, hangs out and plays it cool, these guys might just pile each other up, and he may be sitting in the catbird seat in that dinged-up Menard Chevrolet. Yeah, but if they, if the guys don't, he stands a chance to be in a lot of trouble. I uh, just don't think he's going to be able to make any headway with the amount of damage he's got tonight. Uh, we'll have to see here, and we're getting ready to find out. Pace car pulls in, barely misses the barrels, and Matt Whitten hits the gas and says, Bye-bye, baby. It looks like three wide down into turn number one to Jason Karlovich. He's not going to waste any time as he makes a move on Cater. Cater in trouble right now as he's in a three-wide sandwich out of turn number two, losing spots uh, by the second here as Conte tries to make a move on Richard Doucette. These guys... They know that time is running out. Conte makes a move and picks up a spot. Great move there as he's going to try to work on Brad May here. He's going to pick up the spot. And uh, battle for second right now is uh, looks like uh, Karlovich is caught up to the four car Lewandowski right now. Eight he's around. Trying to get back to the front as the eight goes around and that plate seat Chevrolet trouble. As we have caution on the speedway. Tough break for Richard Doucette, man. He was having a great run here tonight, but, the, man, what a wild restart that was. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. It's exactly like the 10 got in the back of the 8, dumped him around in the corner and took off. No damage to the 10 car. Lots of damage to the 8, Sean Bickle. I'm sure that team is not real happy right now. Yeah, man, I just watched that on the e-play. Boy, one car just really snuck around there on the outside there between the 8 and the wall. But, uh, man, I tell you what, the 10 car of David Cater, boy, he, uh, right from the get-go, man, he was under heavy fire. And was three wide out of the corner there. These guys weren't wasting any time trying to get by him, man. So, uh, man, I, you know, I don't know, Ed. Tough break there for the eight car, though, but nonetheless slowed down again here with about 20 laps to go. And uh, I don't know, Ben, uh, anybody looking like maybe they're going to head down pit road? Guys, I don't think get a lot of fakers. The only guys that are going to take it are the ones that get duped. Yeah, it looks like everybody's staying out. Uh, We'll see. See a few cars on pit road. Looks like the uh, 24 car. He is on pit road, getting some tires and fuel. And obviously the eight car, Richard Doucette, uh bringing that place seat Chevrolet down to uh, the attention of his crew. Man, they got a lot of hammering to do. Boy, he took a heavy lick down there, Ben. Yeah, guys, they uh pit crews they had to stop jawing just for a minute to work on that car change some tires maybe pull a fender out uh i think they're gonna go back to jawing drivers aren't happy <laughs> yeah absolutely do a bit of a race we rewind here and uh remember started on the pole jc right now running third and uh, we got 20 laps to go here. And uh, John Wessling, how many cautions and how many laps was it? 
Guys, they're going to break the barrier here for the Friday night. I don't think we've ever broken the 10 lap barrier here on the Friday night showdown, but uh, I think these guys are going to do it here at Milwaukee tonight. Nine cautions, 34 laps, guys. Wow, nine cautions, 34 laps. So, uh, definitely not the race. And I tell you what, I just got word in my ear that uh, there, wa there was two splits for the, uh, the B car here at Milwaukee uh, tonight this time and uh the other split is already over <laughs> so and i guess this was the uh the, uh it's supposed to be the bottom split but evidently this was the top split of the night since there were two but at the time we, we only saw one and uh this one's still going got 19 laps to go it keeps dragging on but uh aj you know matt witten uh, let's talk about him for a minute man he is uh Number one car out there, got the, the top I rating, and uh, put himself out front about the halfway point. A few guys pit, and he's decided to stay out, and all these cautions help him, you know, with that fuel mileage, and all these cautions keep happening. He's got some great restarts. You know, he can't lose the way it's going. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I like the three car. Um, you know, pretty aggressive move there in the last restart. He had to get what he could. I like. I still like the three car. Um, Matt's pretty good too. And I actually, I seen on the spectator chat, first, third, and sixth, um, right before that accident, um, I was all sharing the same setup. So I'm thinking the three has got the same setup as the one, and maybe the ten, or the, or the twelve up there. I'm not really sure, but uh, we're just gonna have to wait to find out here. Um, hopefully, I can finish this thing uh, green. We've got 18 laps to go. Yeah, we'll have to see. 18 laps to go. Pace cars in. Matt Witten gets another great restart. And uh, right, Lewandowski restarts second. He's going to shut the door on that number three car. So the battle right now for second between Jason Karlovich and Michael Conte. They started 1-2 tonight. Right now running third and fourth out of turn number two. Still side by side. These two battling down the backstretch into three, not wanting to give it inches. They make contact going into three as Karlovich gives them a little bit of a door slam going through the corner to uh, pick up the spot. Here comes Michael Conte. He's going to try to, uh, you know, uh, come back on the inside there down the front stretch. And here he goes down into turn number one. So move Michael Conte into the third spot, AJ. Yeah, man, look at Brandon Schmidt. Smashed up car. Hadn't went to pit road to fix it. Man, he's up to sixth place. Battle for the lead down into turn number three as Lewandowski picks up the spot, but he gets loose. Here comes Witten. He's going to do the crossover on him and uh, take the lead back out of turn three and four. Lewandowski, he is dirt tracking that car around the Milwaukee mile right now. Michael Conte making the move on him now down into turn number one. Going to pick up the spot, move Lewandowski back two spots in the fourth right now. So here's Michael Witten leave him out of turn number two, followed by Conte and Jason Karlovich. This is going to be the uh, battle for the win right now is uh, 15 laps to go here if we can get this thing in under green flag right now. Single foul all the way back. These guys seem to have settled it down, but battle for second spot. Let's go back up. As here comes Karlovich as they cross the stripe on Michael Conte down into turn number one. Battle for second, AJ. Yep, and and Karlovich side by side coming out of one and two. Carver's gonna look like he's gonna get the spot out of the five's gonna gonna battle back out. Conte's gonna try to hold him off. Big side by side through three and four. Three wins the battle. Jason Carver's up to second. Gonna take a gonna try to take a, a look under uh under Witten here. Gonna go for the lead. In the turn one. And he does pull it over and Witten looks like he didn't fight it. Three oh, goes three goes to the front. Yeah, and here comes the four, Lewandowski's Michael Conte. He kind of got the screw going down in the corner the way that worked out is Lewandowski's going to try to make the move and pick up the third spot. But the Jason Karlovich up into the top spot right now, followed by Michael Witten. And, uh, you know, Karlovich, he was on pit road, so he may have a little bit of an advantage with the tires right now. And uh, he is pulling away right now for Michael Witten. Michael Conte doing all he can to try to get up there to uh, battle him, but finds himself running in fourth right now. 
trying to make the move on the four car not going to happen a little bit of business out of turn number two but uh, Lewandowski doing a great job holding them off and man I tell you what here comes that number two car guys that car is banged up we saw him around into the wall heavy contact all four corners dinged up and he's making a move on the 12 of Brad May here to uh, pick up the fifth spot right now absolutely Schmidt up to um up to fifth place all right, now he's got his eyes on that one. That's that's championship points. Um, still a couple more spots up. I, I don't know if the damage is going to stop him from getting there, but what an effort, man, up to fifth place with that car uh, dinged up like it is. I know he's been probably working all week on that setup. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's definitely paying off right now. I thought the damage had him done. Yeah, I've got a few cars in the back here. It looks like the 28 and the 22. They are definitely off the pace and keeping it up. Oh, and there's going to be contact. Oh. The 23 gets into the back of the 28. Oh, everybody misses him. Looked like the 16 went around on the front stretch. Caustin is out with 10 laps to go. Man, they were trying to stay out of the way, and, boy, that 23 just jacked up that car in front. Man, I tell you what, the number nine of Phil Juring did a heck of a job getting through there. Get me an end car, please, one of you camera guys, Jerry. Man, I'm going to tell you what, I'm taking a look at this, Sean Bicklin. That 23, I mean, he just flat out laid right into the rear of that 28, lifted him all the way up out of the back. I tell you what, I think he could have seen the back or underneath of his car, Sean Bickle. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think the 28 was just trying to stay out of the way and woed up and the 23 didn't realize i mean you know he was going 10 miles an hour and just jacked them up there but man i tell you the nine of phil during did one i mean one heck of a job getting through there and you know man unbelievable and uh yeah it could have been a lot worse than what it was but nonetheless we're gonna slow him down here with nine laps to go and it, you know these restarts have been crazy now it's definitely go time inside 10 to go AJ. Absolutely. You mentioned Phil Juring, man. It was just like he just held it to the floor and uh, a hole opened up there just in time for him to go through. That was uh, definitely the wildest part of the race I've seen so far. <laughs> he was all or nothing there. Yeah, I don't think he lifted at all. And he said, I'm going to I'm going to zig and I hope you zag. So I get out of the way here. Uh, but nonetheless, made it through. So uh, great job by Phil and the good hand driver, good hands move of the race, I guess you could say. But the, real quick, you know, AJ, I want to uh, talk about that number two car, Brandon Schmidt. You know, he's all dinged up and, you know, I called his name up there running right now in the top five with that dinged up car. Does he have a chance? He does have a chance. He's restarting fifth. Gets that key inside line. What he's chasing is that number one of Matt Witten. He's going to be second on the outside line. So, man, this is going to be probably the most intense restart we've had of this race by far. Yeah, I tell you, these guys are going to be up on the wheel right now on this last restart. And, uh, and I tell you, I don't think I saw anybody hit pit road, but... Uh, Tell you what, we got to do it. Let's step away real quick. We're going to catch our breath. And we're going to come back and bring this one uh, back and see what exactly shakes out here at the Milwaukee Mile. Stick and stay. You're not going to want to go away. See how this one Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Thank you for tuning in here to the Leader and Sim Broadcasting ETV Live. I want to remind everybody, get over to www.etv-eplay.net. Check out all the ePlays that these guys put up there. Man, they are just fantastic. Sign up, get logged in. 
Go to Facebook, look up ETV Live, and like us. We know you do. Get involved with ETV. We're going to be broadcasting a bunch of stuff. You're going to want to be uh, involved with it here. I tell you what, these guys are going to get the green flag. It's going to be a five-lap shootout here. These guys cycle through turn number three and four. Pace car, I believe, is going to head for pit road. And uh, as Justin James says, the stick man's got the flag. Looks at the leader. Gives him the nod. Green flag is out. And Jason Karlovich hammers down, down into turn number one. What a great start. Here comes Thomas Lewandowski. He's going to try to make the move. Witten slides way up. That really foils the move that Conte had. Conte and Witten going to lose some spots. Here comes the number two. All banged up. Nonetheless, he's going to move up into the fourth spot as Witten puts the the slide job there on the, the 12 of Brandon Murray. Oh, Witten got ran goes over. around and Conte's involved. All two of the top guys involved into the wall. Caution is out. I don't know. Is this going to end it? Unbelievable. Man, I, man, people, man, that one car is all jacked up. That red right front uh, tire is, just, man, that whole car is just aiming for the wall, Jerry Wolf. Yeah, I tried to figure out what took place. Oh, it looks like the 12 got in the back of the one, and that's what started all this. Unfortunately for that five car, you are correct, Monaco Conte took a hard hit into the wall, as well as the number one car of Matt Witten. Tough break here because these guys, were the, uh, I believe they were the front of the pack, so going to be a rough night for them as well, huh, Sean Biggle? Yeah, absolutely, but uh, I tell you what, there's a few guys uh, right now smiling because, uh, you know, our rating gains, that one car, <laughs> he is uh, right now being scored in 15 spots, so a few guys may be uh, picking up some I rating points tonight because that one car uh, uh, found some trouble here late, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, oh, tough break for Witten and Conte. Conte, uh, wild man, he has uh, pulled that car on the pit road, so he's going to come down and try to make a pit stop here. Yeah, guys, I I think there's a couple cars that just they rent their stuff right there, and they know that that's their only option. But I'm still looking at the number two car of Mayhar or Schmidt, excuse me, and I I really think <laughs> that he got he got lucky that his damage didn't affect his car at all. If anything, it made it better. He's sitting in third spot right now. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, that, that Menards crew got it done, got that car patched up. But real quick, you know, while we're uh, pacing around here uh, under caution, I want to give a shout-out to the number 21 car, Steve Rosner, guys. I just saw him flash through uh, my screen here. He is right now 24 laps down in the 23rd spot, but nonetheless still out on the track putting in the laps here. And uh, so he's going to get the Iron Man Award tonight. <laughs> Great job, Steve Rosner, uh, getting it done, man. But, uh, boy, I tell you what, I don't know. Are we going to get the uh, green flag again, A.J. Browning? I do think we're going to have a one-lap shootout. Um, I'm not seeing anybody talk about it on the spectator chat. That wreck happened uh, lap 95. I believe you get three laps to four laps. So I think we're going to have a one-lap one lap shootout uh here for the win and man who knows we've seen it all tonight but who knows what's going to happen if we get one lap yeah i tell you what these guys look like they're lined up like uh man we're going to shoot them off down into uh, turn number one here and have what i think what about two laps or something gonna get the gr green and white this time because this will be lap number 99 that we'll be working the lights go Maybe on the pace car ah uh, no That may, that may do it, because this could be 99. Next time around is going to be the last lap. So, uh, I don't know. Lights are out on the pace, so I believe we get lap 100. Oh, it's going to be one. It's going to be hell right here. <laughs> put your, uh, buckle your chin strap, AJ, and put your mouthpiece in, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. One lap one shootout. Lap. I'm glad I'm protecting my safety rating right here in the in the broadcast booth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
I tell you what, man. And uh, you know, let, let's give a call out to that number six of Chris Overland right now, running in fifth. He was uh, he was involved back there with that number two. Both those guys, uh, you know, right now up in the top five, uh, had, you know, recovering well. And uh, but you know, really, I want to give a call to Thomas Lewandowski. Guys really showed his stuff tonight, man, and uh, been fighting hard. Once he got the track position, pace car is in. One lap shootout. Green flag is out. Green and white together. This this is going to decide it right here. Let's see what happens. Karlovich gets a great run, a great restart through one and two. Trouble behind him as Cater goes around. Looks like uh, these guys going to race back through the flag. They looks like they're not slowing down. Looks like Karlovich has the advantage right now down into turn three and four, followed by Lewandowski, Schmidt, Mayhair, and Overland. Out of turn number four, this is going to do it. Checkered flag is out, and Jason Karlovich going to get the win here at the Milwaukee Mile, by Lou, followed by Lewandowski, Brandon Schmidt, Chris Overland, and then Brand, Brad Mayher, Phil Juring in sixth, Michael Lemon seventh, Brandon Bowie eighth, Richard Doucette ninth, and Matt Holden's going to round out the top ten. It was crazy. I saw David Cater go around down there, but uh, nonetheless, this thing is over, even. Yep, it's over. We got a winner, Jason Carvelage. Uh Tell you what, I don't think the excitement's ended, man. I want to see what's going on down there in the garage. Who's mad at who? What's you know? What's the drama? Guys, the ten car and the thirteen, I believe, are they're throwing wrenches and swinging jacks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The wild man's down there, and uh, you know. It's just going to be absolute chaos down there uh, on Pit Road. I mean, all these teams, it's going to be a battle royale, so to speak. But uh, nonetheless, Jason Karlovich and that number three car started on the pole tonight, guys. He's going to burn them down here at the Milwaukee Mile. He got the win here in the final race on Friday night in the B, in the, uh, B Split Showdown, the ETV Showdown, whatever the heck we call it here. But uh Burning them down, he's got the win, so congratulations, Jason Karlovich. Tell you what, we're going to end this thing here. So for Sean, the businessman, Bickle, the Buckeye, A.J. Browning, the wild man, Ben Burnett down on pit road, the bad boy John Wessling, and Jerry Wolf, my main man, working the cameras. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with us this season. Get over to etv-eplay.net. Good night.